Hi guys, so you would have seen recently I started painting up a lot of the Hero Quest furniture packs uh, as well as painting up some zombies from the Zombie Side game as I'll be using them in an upcoming homebrew campaign uh, and as you can probably quite clearly tell yeah I'm a very visual person and when I play sort of board games or D&D or Hero Quest I do like to have everything nice and neat and painted and well looking good and very playable and that's definitely obviously what this uh, the Hero Quest board is that you'd have seen me again. I'd have painted and made that in a previous video, and absolutely love using it because obviously, well, who wouldn't? Because it, it just looks great. It's a nice big full size board, 3D printed, um, and said yeah, painted by yours truly. So absolutely love using this. But as much as I love the look of this, and I say as a board game, yeah, this is awesome, and definitely this is what I use when I uh, play Hero Quest with my kids. Uh, but I feel when I play this game with my friends, obviously they start in a room, say like this, over in a corner. They kind of know that when they come out of their room, they're going to be going, obviously, sort of to the left and down. And whilst this is obviously still fun, and there's obviously a lot of good gameplay in this, um, it does mean the heroes kind of know roughly which direction they're heading to, or where they may need to sort of go to find, well, the boss, or whatever objective it is that they're trying to sort of they're doing in, in this game, in this campaign. Uh, and yeah, I just feel that, well, they get to see too much of the board and know too much of kind of what's going on, even before, obviously, I lay out everything. So, I've had a cunning plan, although I say a cunning plan. This is probably what lots of people do anyway. Uh, but this is what I'm going to be doing from now on, just to make it a little bit more harder for my, my heroes. And I say all the games I play are going to be homebrew. So, yeah, I don't want them knowing where they're going, what's happening, or even like how many rooms are possibly out there. So they're obviously still going to come down the stairs, because obviously it's going to be in a dungeon, because, well, I love dungeons. Uh, but yeah, they're going to literally start on one sort of square like this, uh, whatever size the room may be. And then as they get to a door, open the door, then it will reveal, obviously, whatever's sort of going on outside that door. And I'm sure this is probably what a lot of you guys do already. Say, so I've only been playing Hero Quest for, well, just over two months now. I'm absolutely loving it. And say, so doing homebrew rules does mean you can sort of change the game to make it more enjoyable for the kind of people that you're playing with. And I so say, definitely having this sort of layout so that they really can't see where they're going, what they're doing, until they actually get to the bit. Uh, and obviously, then they move along the corridors. Um, and the great thing this is, I can do a great maze. As in, they'll be sort of moving along and then they'll just end up getting lost. And the other thing I want to do with this is when they all enter sort of like a room um, and then obviously battle any enemies and do searching, whatever, I'm going to remove all the other bits. Um, again, just so they almost forget where they've come from. Especially if they have to sort of do an objective where they have to go and get something and then go back to a room. Um, yeah, this will definitely make it more confusing for them. And even more so if while we're doing the gameplay, I, well, spin the room around just to, again, disorientate them. Uh, but I just feel this will make it a bit more a bit more exciting because they really won't know where they're going, where they've been, or what's going on, really, which <laughs> kind of makes this thing a whole lot more fun. So as you can see, yeah, I've got these floorboard pieces. And these are lovely and simple, but yeah, as you can see, there is sort of 3D texture in it. Um, but it's just MDF, good old 3mm MDF. Um, and yeah, I've been able to put texture in it to make it look like, well, in this case, floor stones. Although you will see later on, I've got some wooden planks as well. And the great thing with this is, I can make these, well, whatever size I need. Um, and the, uh, the hallways, I can make them one sort of wide, or I can make them two wide, or three wide, or whatever I want to do, which is just awesome. And these things were simply made on, yeah, you guessed it, a laser engraver. And in this case, I'm using the Creality Falcon 2. Uh, which was kindly sent to me to, well, have a bit of a play with and, yeah, see what I can do with it. So I thought, yeah, making some dungeon floor tiles. Um, again, I love things when they're simple and easy to do. And this couldn't have been any simpler. Just plug a few bits in. This one comes with a nice sort of case over the top. Obviously, these do produce some smoke, uh, depending on well, how much you're cutting, whether you're in laser engraving or whatever. And this one comes with, say, the enclosure and a hose, so I can chuck that out the window. As you can see there, good old uh, UK weather, yeah, chucking down the rain outside. So say, I'm using 3mm uh, MDF for this. Uh, this is a 20 watt laser engraver, so pretty powerful. Uh, and I say, I'm still amazed that they let, uh, well, the likes of me have a laser engraver at home to play with, which is just nuts. 
So I went on Google to look up, uh, well, sort of floor or stone flooring. Um, found this image, so I just downloaded it. Uh, but obviously this isn't going to sort of come out too well on the laser engraver because it kind of like goes with black and white sort of looking stuff. So yeah, there's a few clicks of a few buttons just to change it so it was more of a, well, a black and white looking image. Um, and yeah, this is what I kind of ended up with. I did adjust it a little bit more uh, just to get rid of some of those darker areas because basically what that happens is the laser engraver will obviously then just laser engrave anything that's dark, uh, which is pretty cool. So once I had that one pattern, um, then it was just a case of, well, reducing it down to whatever size I needed and then saving each of these as an individual file. Just so I can make up a good variety of, say, different size rooms and, and even the corridors. I was having some of the corridors one wide, some two wide, and then even the length of the corridors. Um, and obviously from this, you can make, well, whatever sort of sizes you want. Um, you could increase it by doubling it up. And then, yeah, using the software, I use Lightburn, uh, very easy to use, well, the bits I use are very easy. It's just a case of dragging and dropping whatever it is you want to, well, cut out or laser engrave. So, obviously, all these items go in. Um, I try to get as many as I could on there. So, the boards that I'm using are A3 sheets, uh, A3 sheets, MDF, 3mm, got from good old Amazon, because that's kind of where, well, I kind of buy everything. I will leave links down below to everything I'm using, guys. So, yeah, check out the... Uh, Creality Falcon 2, um, yeah, awesome laser engraver, obviously a whole variety of things you can use it for, but in this case, yeah, I'm using it for some good old dungeon floors, making them nice and easy. So this is obviously going to engrave this onto the MDF, but I then need to be able to cut them out. Um, and again, this software, very easy to use, um, yeah, it's just a case of drawing a sort of, well, whatever shape I want to cut out onto the, uh, the board. Um, and then you can see, so there's two different things here. One's going to do laser engraving, which would be all the uh, the floor plan look, and then one's going to do the actual cutting. Um, so there's different um, different speeds and power output here. Uh, this is one of these ones where sometimes it's trial and error, but you can just go online and look what other people have done. Um, so yes, yeah, so I don't like to use the uh, the laser at 100% because obviously you want it to sort of last longer. So using it at a, a, um, a lower sort of power, but then a longer speed. So yeah, this could have been sped up to have been done quicker, but as I say, I want to sort of uh, make sure that everything sort of works well and doesn't burn out. Um, say, laser engravers, uh, they are real ones, so yeah, take any sort of safety precautions you need to take when using them. And that's basically it, yeah, as simple as that, so it's ready to sort of send off to print. Um, as you can see, so these are the boxes it's going to cut out and the other bit it's going to engrave. And as I say, these things are just amazing. So very simple, very easy, but the outcome, yeah, awesome. So click the play button and away it goes. So I've got this sped up a bit. Um, I say I did have this going reasonably slow and I think in total it took about three hours. So yeah, I say it could have gone a lot faster, but um, yeah, I've always sort of read and heard you shouldn't really use a laser engraver at full sort of speed for too long because, well, it's not good for it. So as you can see though, it does produce quite a lot of smoke. Um, I did this little bit of filming with the cover off just so you can initially sort of see what's happening. Again, it does look like there's more smoke than there actually really is because this is sped up. Um, yeah, you're just seeing, well, a ton of smoke. So yeah, this great thing. Um, it's all in clo closed even. Uh, the only problem I did have, the table I've got it on um, wasn't big enough. So I had to put some tape at the front just to cover up that little hole at the front just so there was no gaps, just so the um, the little fan in there could suck all the, uh, the smoke and obviously poisonous fumes and chuck them out the window to, well, someone else. Um, but yeah, as you can see, absolutely love this thing. Say, it's so simple, so easy to use, um, and the fact that I can make up as many tiles as I want, whatever size I want, make all the rooms however I want, um, and yet when my heroes come to play the game, they'll have no idea where they're going. So this is now doing the um, the cutting, uh, so this obviously goes a whole lot slower, even though I have still, again, sped this up a little bit. Um, but as you can see, yeah, lovely clean cuts. And that's what I love about these laser engravers, just how well you can cut MDF perfectly. So if, I'm going to be making some little diorama boxes up soon, and I'm going to use this purely just to cut up the MDF, just so you get that nice straight clean cut edge, which is just awesome. And there we go, so about three hours later, and yeah, it's cut again. Guys, I just love the fact you can have these kind of things at home now. I mean, this hobby really has sort of changed dramatically 
over the last three, four years. Um, so I started this channel about nearly four years ago. Um, and yeah, it's just changed, well, for the best, obviously, uh, because a lot more things are more reasonably priced and, well, affordable for the likes of you and me sitting at home just messing about. So, as you can see, everything came out really, really well. Uh, obviously, it needs to be primed before painting. And this is where I wasn't too sure if this primer would work. So, I like using this Color Forge Matte Black. Um, I use this as a go to on all my miniatures. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm using it on some MDF. And I'm very pleased to say, yeah, it came out perfectly. Um, I say this Matte Black, I love it. For miniatures, it's been my go to now for, well, I don't know, a good six months or more because it really does dry the mattest of black ever. Um, and as you can see, yeah, the uh, the colour is just perfect on the MDF. Um, it's soaked in nicely and dried perfectly. So, going to keep this really, really clean and easy. And all I'm going to do is some dry brushing. Um, I say I do like things that are simple, uh, but especially when they come out really well. So I'm using the brushes by Artify. Uh, again, link down below, guys. I've been using these brushes for again for about the last two months, and absolutely love them. Got a whole variety of dry brushes as well as normal sort of painting brushes. Uh, and yeah, it's as simple as this uh, dry brushing. I did do two coats. I say, because I am using the uh, the cheap white, I did mention this in a couple of other videos. Uh, yeah, when dry brushing with this cheap white, it does dry to a kind of a, not quite gray, but definitely more of an off white. So it's quite good in a way though, because obviously doing two coats, you then get two variations of the white, uh, a much sort of like paler, not quite grey, but almost grey, white, and then a more crisper, cleaner white on top. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it took no time at all, and then I've got a ton of boards, rooms, corridors, all the rest. Um, and as I say, I just love how these have come out. Very quick, very simple. Um, for gameplay, again, I know these. this has probably been done by you guys a lot anyway. And funny enough, when I used to play D&D back in the early 80s, um, I think I played between 1983 and 1986, I played D&D. We didn't use these kind of floor tiles, we just had, well, pen and paper. Um, I had loads of metal miniatures, um, but yeah, we would draw out where they were going. Um, and yeah, as you can see, absolute ton of, uh, well, rooms, corridors. So yeah, I really can do whatever I want to do now. And yeah, I can't wait to play my next, um, my next homebrew game of Hero Quest which is in, well, a couple of weeks' time, which is good because I've got a rough idea what I'm doing. Um, as in regards to the quest, I just need to flesh it out a bit more um, and make sure I've got lots of minis printed, which is just great. So, as you would have seen, um, yeah, as well as doing the floor tiles, uh, you can do whatever you want. So, I had a look online and I found some sort of wooden sort of floor panels squares. Um, and, yeah, printed them out or laser engraved them out. And the great thing here is, obviously because I'm using the MDF board, there's no need to paint these afterwards because, well, it looks like wood. Um, yeah, which is just awesome. If you guys want these uh, these files, I will leave these over on my Patreon page. Um, so yeah, there's like be one big square wooden tile one, and one big square stone one, and then obviously you just make them, well, whatever size you need them to be. So yeah, the other good thing about these is, because they're nice and thin and flat, I thought for sort of storing them, I will use one of these A4 binders with the clear plastic sleeves. Um, I mean, this is what I'm using for the moment. The chances are this will change and I'll end up 3D printing or even laser engraving some sort of other holder for all these bits and pieces. Uh, but for now, yeah, just shove them in these slots, keep them all separate. Um, and again, just makes it nice and easy to sort of pull them out use them and pop them back in when they're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video guys and found it informative and yeah laser engravers it's one of those things you never knew you wanted or needed uh, but then when you've got one the possibilities are really endless obviously I've done something very simple with making some floor tiles but you can use it to cut out and make a whole variety of buildings boxes and well all kinds of stuff really which is just amazing. So if you are new here and you like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell as I do produce a couple of videos every week. And you can share, leave comments, hit the like button, all that kind of good stuff as that helps promote me, which would be awesome guys, as I am on the road to 100k subscribers. Still got quite a way to go, but with your help, I will get there. Okay, bye now.